guys, Todd here. Uh, right, just realised something, and I'm only realising this because I've just oh go away. Uh, I've just read on a forum of which was vaporsden.com. Uh, Mark Burton was it Mark Burton? Uh, <laughs> I just realised that when I did the stainless steel wick video, it was just me going, "Look how great this is." Uh, and I never actually showed you me setting it up and whatnot, so I will remedy this now. This is going to be me uh, with a length of stainless steel wick and cutting it and setting it up. So bear with me. Okay, what I've got here is a length of 7 by 19 stainless steel rope. There's many different grades out there, 7 by 7 uh, and, and it just goes on and on. Uh, I'm not going to get into that just now. Uh, but this is uh, what I'll show you here is the well what I found is the best way to cut it uh, now first thing first is uh, you want to decide what length you want so let's just say I want this much here uh, I'm going to take a bit of tape this is just insulation tape and just put a little bit round there like so That's me. I just find that when cutting through this, it, it helps keep stuff together. Um, now, I've got a pair of uh, tin snips here, and if you're going to be working with this stuff, um, I would suggest that you get yourself a decent pair of snips uh, or anything that's going to cut through stainless steel. Uh, you, you do need to use a bit of pressure, uh, force here, unless you've got proper snips. Uh, but uh, you don't want to muck about with this. So I'm just going to, I'll probably go off screen here because I need a bit of force on this. So I'm just going to, and watch out when you snip through it that it doesn't go shooting off and hit you in the eye. Yeah, I'm going to have to go off screen with this. Or these need sh sharpened. I'm just, oh, there we go. And that's me. I've got my piece cut. Right. Now what I'll do is I'll uh, get this bit of tape off. And you can see it, hopefully see there that it has kind of uh, opened up a bit. Now this bit I will use up the top. Uh, this is 2 mil in diameter, um, and this is what I'm going to put my my mesh round. Uh, well, it depends. If that's still going to fit through your uh, wick hole, then no problem. You can just stick that down, uh, but depending on the size of your wick hole. All right. Uh, now, next thing. Going to need one of these. A burner or a gas stove uh, you really really want to heat this up you want to get it glowing red hot um, Now, that might cool down, uh, but believe me, that is still roasty toasty. Uh, so I'm just going to spin it round, and I'm going to do the other side. And that's that. Right, 
we'll uh, we'll let this cool down for a wee bit. Okay, here we have uh, my G Bell uh, Atty combo hybrid. Sorry, I should say, and uh, I'm going to use this. So there you see, I've concurred the size, and it's just lined up with uh, my centre post, ready to go. Now, because of the way you know, it's the rope isn't actually a flat surface, so if you put uh, stainless steel, you know, uh, not stainless steel, sorry, but uh, gibber, 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 some canful or nichrome around that, or ribbon wire around that, because it's not perfectly flat, you're going to get hot spots. Um, so what you need to do is, he says, grab yourself a little bit of stainless steel mesh, size it against there, so I know exactly what height I want it to be. And lengthwise, it only needs to go round a couple of times just so that it holds it in place. You don't need a, a vast amount. Uh, and, and that's all I've got, just a tiny, tiny wee bit. Um, and I'm going to give this a quick flame uh, just to oxidise it. There we go, we're uh, oxidized. <laughs> wow, that was hot. Uh, and we're oxidized. And the easiest way to do it is to actually take the wick back out. And because you've measured it, you should have a good idea of where we're going here. And just wrapping it round. Make sure it's tight. And as always with stainless steel mesh. You know, roll it in one direction, it'll get tighter. Roll it in the other direction, it'll get loose. So you want this to be tight round the top. And that's me. Probably not the best there, actually. But we'll go with it anyway. So I'll stick that in here. There we go. Right, let's get a coil around this. Right, that's me set up there. Uh, well, not set up, that's me wrapped up, I should say. Uh, I'm using some of my gear from uh, Stealth Ape. Um, actually, that wasn't the one I used. Oh, well, it was. Um, what I would say is... If you're used to vaping at, uh, say, 1.6, drop it a bit for stainless steel mesh rope. Stainless steel mesh rope, stainless steel rope. Uh, drop the resistance a bit because the ramp up time uh, is a bit longer, so you need a bit more heat there to get it cooking faster. So. Uh, that's just my opinion, but that's the way I've been doing it. I've just been uh, dropping the resistance a little bit. Uh, I haven't got any juice in the tank. Uh, I'm doing the old wrapping it round and pulsing away until I get my coils nice and even glowing. That centre one needs a little bit of adjustment. Uh, it may take a little bit of tweaking, uh, but, uh, you know, another warning, oh, that was hot, <laughs> uh, another warning is that this stuff, no, nah, it's better, this stuff retains heat like nobody's business. Uh, if you're using polycarbonate tanks, um, glad well, any tank be careful when you're pulsing this because the heat will be kept in it and the heat will travel down i mean this tank is actually warm right now and i've just been pulsing it for about two minutes um take a break 
you know, keep checking the heat on the tank and the, the atty. Make sure it's not getting really, really hot because you will damage your tank. Uh, believe me, I've done it. Um, so that's us uh, all raring to go here. Let's get some juice in here. Okay, here we go. Uh, right, that's me uh, set up there. I filled the tank up. Not fired it yet. I uh, put a couple of drops in the top uh, just to get it going. And um, we'll see how this goes. And that is quite healthy. Listen, I'll. This is just my experience in the week that I've been using this stuff. Um, some people may not bother pulsing it and making sure that all the hot spots are gone. Might just bung juice on it and fire it, and it'll wick away. Uh, but I just found that sometimes I could still taste a little hot spot in the background. You get that metallic burnt taste. So I just want to make sure there's zero hot spots before I got going. Um, things to watch out for when you're vaping it. Um, you'll you'll find a balance, a position. Um, it's possible to flood the wick. Um, in that uh, you're, it's just over wicking and uh, you're getting too much juice coming up so it won't burn as quickly as it could uh, so you'll find you need to lower the tilt a wee bit and then you find a happy medium between the supply to the wick and it burning uh, or heating it up uh, you know your normal genesis atomizer you would have the hole facing towards you I actually now have the hole facing away from me because um, I don't need to worry about having it tilted towards me anymore. It's great that way. Um, let's let's have a little vape. Excellent. Uh, I'm not finding any bed in time uh, or anything. I, I, as in my other video, I, I really can't say, expand on how much I like this stuff. Uh, I mean, just they're all running stainless steel mesh. Uh, that's I'm cha everything's changed out to not stainless steel mesh, stainless steel wick. Uh, I might need to take a wrap off that. Uh, that's the only thing that I find a bit of getting used to is finding the balance. You know, you might have to drop the resistance a wee bit in your your coil. Uh, but uh, just a quick amendment before I head off here to vape some. Um, make sure you don't get galvanized stuff. Um, you just want plain stainless steel rope. Um, your boat shops, uh, ironmongers, <laughs> you know, you're going to be able to buy this play stuff in so many places. Uh, vapegear.co.uk. I got a sample pack from them um, and I believe they're going to start selling it. Uh, I think uh, Rob from Stealth Vape is going to be getting some in as well. Um, but, uh, you know, there's lots of places you can get this stuff. And it's dirt cheap. It really is dirt cheap. Um, Cleaning-wise, well, I had to clean it yet. Uh, I'll probably just do a dry burn, uh, if anything. Um, or the thing is, you know, you can just take the wick out and heat it up again if you want. Uh, but, uh, you know, you'll see different types. I mean, I'm using 7 by 19 and there might be a wee picture appears up here. It gives you an idea of what it actually looks like. Uh, the 7x19 is actually more flexible. Um, I was going to say flexible enough to do a U-Wick, but why would you want to do a U-Wick with this stuff? You don't need to. It wicks that well. Um, I had some 7x7 seven seven and it kind of looks like this down the cores. Um, 
And I'll, I'll be perfectly honest, I didn't find a difference between the two in the way they wicked. It's just my take on it. I'm sure other people will have different opinions, so go and listen to them and, and you know. But as far as I was concerned, I couldn't find any difference between the two. Um, and that's it. Go and look in the forums, go and read up. There's folk talking about this stuff all over the place. But uh, get good wire cutters. That makes a hell of a difference. And tape it up before you cut it. Uh, burn the hell out of it. Get it glowing red. Burn off any crap that's in the metal. Um, and put your mesh around the top. Go for gold. Have fun, guys. Cheers.